Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Magnetic Bypass, a Surprising Element. I'd like to thank Evgeny Smidochki for his support in the preparation of this video, and many thanks to Frenetic Company for sponsoring this video, and they are also offering a free trial to the viewers of this presentation. The details are given in the description section of this video. I'd like to start off with an introduction to a reluctance-based magnetic circuit that I'm going to use later on, just the basics of it. If you are not familiar with this approach, please see a reference to it because I'm going to use it later on. So I'm starting here with a slab of a ferrite or ferromagnetic material, say a ferrite, with a relative permeability of mu sub r, length of L sub m and cross-section area of A sub e. Now the reluctance is defined as L sub m, this is the length, over mu sub zero, which is the vacuum permeability of air, and then the relative permeability and cross-section. The units here are one over Henry. Now if I have a transformer, there's a core here, so we have a number of reluctances here. There's these bars here, which are described in an equivalent electrical circuit, like this, where the reluctance is described as a resistor. Here it is. These are the resistors which describe these reluctances. And then we have a voltage source which represents N sub I. This is the MMF coming from the current at the load and the current at the source, current here and current here. And then we have the interface, the electrical interface, in which we have a voltage source, which is actually Faraday's law, like here, in which we have NDF dt, which is the voltage reflected here to the input by Faraday's law as a function of the flux here, which is described as a current in this equivalent circuit. So in this equivalent circuit, reluctance is resistor, flux is current, and MMF is voltage or voltage drop. In a previous video, I've shown a modification to the reluctance equivalent circuit. And in this modification, rather than showing a reluctance plus a voltage source of the MMF, current times number of turns, I've shown that you can replace it by an inductor. The value of this inductor is n squared over Rs, where Rs is the load. So this is for a winding which is connected to a load. And this helps to sort of better understand what is going on in the circuit, as I'll show next. So here is the concept of magnetic bypass that I'm presenting in this video. We have here a core could be built from a double E to E course. We have a winding at the center leg. There is an excitation, V sub P, voltage excitation. And then there is another winding on one of the legs, N sub A, the number of turns. And here we have a resistor with a switch I'm showing. Now this resistor should be small, as we'll discuss later on. It could be just the resistance of the wire itself. Okay, so the unique feature of this element of this uh, device is that we have a free leg here. There's no winding on it. Now, if the switch is off, that is non-conducting, then we have the flux coming from the source, uh, again, Faraday's law, and then the flux is actually divided into two parts to the two side legs. Now, since the cross-section area of each side leg is half, the middle leg, or the other way, the sum of them is the area of the middle leg, then the flux coming off here is split into two equal parts, and therefore the voltage that we'll see here in the open circuit here will be the excitation, one over half, this is because of the area, and then the turns ratio between N sub A and N sub B. So this is very simple. We have a transformer, in which we have uh, this voltage transfer ratio. Now, what happens if the switch is turned on, that is closed, and we have here now current passing. So, as it turns out, 
this equation is incorrect in this particular case. And the reason is that the flux now is not split into two halves. In fact, the flux that will be passing through this leg here with this short is much, much smaller than the flux here. And we are going to examine it by the equivalent circuit, by the reluctance based equivalent circuit. So what I'm doing here is I'm defining these reluctance. This is this one side reluctance, the other side reluctance, and this reluctance, and they are showing here R sub L M for the middle and the right. And then we have the reflected MMF from the input. This is the input, which has this winding here at the center leg. So this is the MMF de defined as the number of turns times the current in this path here. So this is this current here. And then for this side, which has a load here, I'm replacing the conventional voltage source with the inductor, the equivalent inductance here. And the value of the inductance is n squared over RA. And if RA is small, that is like the DC or the resistance of the wire, then this LE is, the inductance of LE is large. So what will happen here is that due to the fact that the impedance here is much larger than the impedance here, then most of the flux will be flowing through here, passing through the lower reluctance value rather than here. So we'll have very little flux here, and therefore the voltage generated at the auxiliary winding will be small, and therefore the current will also be small. So if we have this short, this is the case of the short, then we have an uneven distribution of the flux, and in this leg, then the flux will be much lower and the current will be also low. So this behavior is really different from a regular transformer because if we have a transformer and we are shorting the output, we would expect a large current due to the short. Now in this case, not so because of the flux distribution or redistribution, I should say, that most of the flux is now passing through this magnetic bypass and therefore, the voltage is low here and the current will be low. Now, to examine this, I've set up an LT spice equivalent circuit in which I'm representing this reluctance equivalent circuit. And here we have the reluctances. I'm assuming the same reluctances for the three legs. It's not exactly, but just for demonstration, it's good enough. And then I have a zero voltage sources and these are used just for referencing the current passing through it. The current is representing the flux. And then I have here this auxiliary winding. Here it is. This is the electrical interface. I have here the number of turns times DDT, which is the derivative of the current through this voltage source. So this current here, which is the flux. So this is the phi DT. DDT is the LT spice operator for derivative, and then we have the same thing for the middle leg. Here we have here the number of turns of the middle leg, and then the flux, which is measured by the current passing through Vm. And this leg now is free, only a reluctance. I have this the voltage source, zero voltage source for testing or referencing the current. And here I have, when the switch is open, the input is 10 volt. Here it is, this is 10 volt, 10 kilohertz. And the output, that is the voltage across this auxiliary winding is five volt because of the area being half of the area of the mid leg. Now I'm shorting this auxiliary winding, okay? And we would expect to have a lower voltage. And lo and behold, that's exactly what we have. Again, the input is 10 volt and now the output that is the voltage across the auxiliary switch is only six millivolt. This is before the resistor, okay? And then the current accordingly is 60 milliamp. So the short here does not cause a high current, but rather a low voltage and a low current. 
This is kind of a unique feature of this bypass or magnetic bypass. So what are the possible applications of such a magnetic structure? Well, there are many applications you can think of. And in fact, we've been testing some of them and they are very useful. In this video, I'm going to show one application which I have not tested experimentally. So beware, this has just been tested by simulation. So there might be some issues that are not being looked at, for example, uh, leakage inductances, things like that. And also this application involves high voltage, so one has to be careful about it if you're going to try it experimentally. So here is the application I'm talking about. In this case, we have this structure as I showed before, but then we have another winding here, which is a step up. That is, in this case, we have 10 turns for each of the excitation and the auxiliary. And then we have 1000 turns for this winding, which I call a high voltage. So it's a ratio of one to a hundred. So in open circuit, you'd expect that the voltage here will be 100 because of 1000 divided by 10 and then divided by 2 because of the area. So it'll be half, so it'll be like 500 times the input voltage. The, vo the voltage here will be like the input voltage in the case of 10 and 10 turn. Now this is when the switch is off. Now when the switch is on, then we know that we're going to have here a low voltage and therefore we're going to have a low voltage here. So what we have here is actually a structure in which we can turn on and off a high voltage by a switch, which is floating, not referring to the input or to the output, and has a low voltage across it. So this could be beneficial in cases we like to set a turn on, like for ignition, or some other application that you want a high voltage. To test it, I've set up again a LT spice circuit. And in this case, of course, I have to add this additional winding. So this is the voltage imposed on the high voltage due to Faraday's law. And this is the MMF coming from the current here. Now, this is applicable for high resistances or impedances, because if the resistance is low, then again, we're going to have a low voltage. So this is for an application in which we, we need a high voltage for a high impedance. Now I've set up this option for a capacitor. I'll run it first of all without any capacitance. This is 30 femtofarad, which is very small. And the reason that I have uh, the capacitor here is actually twofold. Number one, we know that there is capacitance, inherent parasitic capacitance to a winding, so I have to take it into account. And then, as it turns out, I'll show it later on, we can actually select a capacitor that will tune with the inductance and therefore actually get a much higher voltage. Okay, we're going to see it later on. So the first thing is, to run it with a short here, okay? In the short, we expect a low voltage here and a low voltage here. And indeed, we see at the high voltage, we see 0.8 volt, a rather low voltage. And the auxiliary circuit, of course, will be lower by 100 volt, okay? So this is when the switch is on. Now, when the switch is off, then we're going to have this transfer ratio, like a transformer, in fact if the impedance here is high. And here is what I'm getting. You see that we get here in this case, 500 volt, about 500 volt, which is expected because the turns ratio is 100. We have 10 volt at the input, and then we have a factor of 0.5 because of the area. So we expect 500 volt, and this is exactly what we are getting at the high voltage winding. Now, as it turns out, we can tune this circuit to the resonance between a capacitor here and the inductance of the circuit. And I'm going to sweep it between 10 picofarad and 250 picofarad with steps of 5 picofarad. First of all, I'm showing here the result for 50 picofarad. You see that in this case, you, we have in fact a little bit of a attenuation because of the loading, but 
if we look at the sweep, we see that around 20 picofarad, we have a resonance and we have a very, very high voltage. So we can generate a very high voltage with this circuit and control it by an auxiliary winding, which has a relative low voltage across it and it has a separate ground, it's floating. So this could be useful in some application, of course. And here is the output. It, this is the high voltage, this is the six kilovolt, and this is the voltage across the auxiliary winding with the switch. Obviously, it is higher because between these two, we have like a regular transformer because we have the same flux passing through these two windings, the auxiliary and the high voltage. So therefore, the ratio should be one to a hundred, which is exactly what we see here. So it's a voltage of 60 volt, which is kind of fairly low. So to summarize, this unique device, magnetic device, with the magnetic bypass is very versatile. You can use it to sort of deflect the flux from one arm to another. And as I've shown, it could lead to some interesting application. As I've said, there are many other ideas that you can build around this uh, device. And I hope to show some of them in forthcoming video. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.